Well, this is for my white brothers and sisters. My white folks. My white people. Now, I know recently I've been cracking a lot of white jokes. But somebody asked me, why do I crack so many white jokes and they're not funny? It's because all my life I heard black jokes from white people that weren't funny. For instance, if you remember the, the retarded black man that was dragged by the neck, you know, the truck. You know, chain around the neck. When that that course, that period of time, I was working at uh, Sears Point Raceway, and um, we was doing a job for a marketing company out of North Carolina, and uh, it was like nine of us in the van, and I was the only black guy in the van. And these guys went on all fucking. Day. Black this, black that, black this, black that, black this, black that. Well, this is not the only period in my life where I went through this shit, but this is one of those periods in time where I was at that age to where it's keep your mouth shut and take your ass to work. So me being the person I am, I waited. And 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 I told a joke. The joke was about a white woman going to the supermarket. She's in the supermarket. She sees this black woman with a uh, shopping basket with a black baby in it. I can go ahead and tell the joke right now and get a bunch of people to fucking hate me some more, but fuck it, I'm going to tell the joke. So the black lady's pushing the stroller. And, um, you know, the white lady walks up and says, Oh, that's just the beautifulest baby. Oh, and the emotion on her face. She's like in love with the little black baby, you know. It's like, wow. This is just the most beautiful child I've ever seen. How can I have one of those? I mean, I've been trying to have one of those ever since I got married. I just I just I just want to have one of those beautiful brown babies. I just gotta have one. How do how do I have one? The black lady's like, I can't believe this shit. What the fuck? So she says, um, no, well, ma'am, um, okay, I'll I, I tell you what. Is his dick that long? White lady said, no, no, it's not. She says, well, um, hmm, is it at least that thick? She says, no, no, it's not. You know, it's, you know, it, it is what it is. And the black man said, you know what? Your problem is simple. He's letting too much light in. Well, after these guys hear this joke, they were all offended. You mean, eight people, nine people in a van, eight people, and one driver is so ten people. So, Eight guys tell black jokes seven fucking hours. No, I'm sorry, that's an exaggeration. Six hours straight. Straight. They didn't, they didn't tell whimsical funny jokes. They told those, hmm, gotcha nigga jokes. And all of them laughed. And when I told this joke, the bus went fucking stone, stone cold silent. You can hear a fly farting in that motherfucker. You can hear an ant pissing in the counter. You can hear the air coming out the fucking tires. Then the supervisor, dude from North Carolina, says, that's it, that's it, no more joking around. That's not, you guys stop that. I told one fucking joke. He says, you know what, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna tell the last goddamn joke on this bus. What does a black man and a medium pizza have in common? silence again and of course me being the only fucking black on the bus little van and I just show stopped the whole fucker I said I don't know he said there ain't no difference between a black man and a medium pizza a medium pizza can feed 
there's he said there's no connection between black men and medium pizza because a medium pizza can feed a family of three you get it the man who was paying me to do a job just told me I can't even feed my family and then we couldn't joke no more so in the course of my life it's been like that white folks I mean you know I'm not hating on none of my white people none of you at all but in the course of my life most of my negativity that I've ever received has come from white folks so if white people have given me this material to use why shouldn't I use it I don't stereotype white people I don't generalize white people and I don't speak of them in a sad light but I can make comments on shit and be called a nigger black this black that when the war comes you're kind of going to be hanging from lamp posts and I'm getting threats I get threats from white people because I don't think anybody black is going to say when the war comes we're going to sling you niggas up over lamp posts and shit gang banging thugs um, anybody can look at me tell me I ain't a goddamn gang banger my banging days is over I don't bang I rock the good rhymes and the whole scenery used to remind me of good times but now you know lately I have been harsh on white people but if you remember when I first started YouTube I was harsh on Mexican people see there's a work up and a build up now if there's three colors on one flag and you've hit the first two colors what color do you think is going to be next on my list so I'm bagging on white people right now I love my white friends my white family my white family members but uh, I'm not hating on white people so in saying all that I have said and watch the movie for the white in me then you'll know the movie the video for the white in me um, white people don't be mad at me for the material that was given to me by your ancestors don't do that um, because if you could put a monkey on a shirt and put Obama 08 on there and think you know there's nothing wrong with that that's cute then that's fine then I should be able to say whatever I want to regardless if it's funny for you guys or not um, I don't sit back and waste my time dwelling on white folks um, in a manner in which you may think I do because I don't um, I appreciate all that the white people have done for me those who have done something for me let me tell you a real quick story real fast and uh, this is about white people and if you're out there and you're listening and you're mad about what I'm about to say then um, what's the word I want to use well it ends with a U well it's two words okay listen here it goes me and my brother were driving down the street in my car. This was like the first car that I totally bought by myself. It was like a 1970-something Green Hornet. Okay, get your fucking laughs out now. Green Hornet. Okay, black guy, little Green Hornet. Okay, go. So, um, you know, we're driving down, uh, I think it's San Pablo Avenue. And we're down near San Pablo, San Pablo Inn. And uh, right where they got the casinos at right now. And you see all these black people driving by us, pointing and laughing. I mean, my brother's like, because, you know, don't don't get me wrong, I was young at the time. So, you know, when you got these young kitty drivers, the motherfuckers drive super slow. I'm thinking, they ain't they messing with me because I'm driving the speed limit. You know, shit, I don't want my car taken, you know. And for about 30 minutes, every car that pulled up alongside of us was full of black people. And they were laughing. Like, ha, <laughs> ha, shit pointing and laughing and um then a white guy pulled up alongside in the Volkswagen uh bus type van thing and he screamed out his window your car's on fire your car's on fire so me and my brother pull over and shit he pulled over his wife and everybody got out of the little van he took the quilt off his baby threw it on the engine and here the lady's like That's, that quilt's been in my family 140 years what are you doing and he's putting the engine out. Are you guys okay? Are you guys... This was a white man. Every other so-called black person was niggas. Niggas laughing. Car on fire. Black people laughing at us. A white man gets out the car, takes the 100-something-year-old fucking uh, quilt off his baby and puts on the engine and puts the car out. So, I was tubed. 
And that's a story that was true.